Welcome back to Analytics Advantage. Thank you guys for tuning in. Coming back today with another free pick. Uh, it is super early, and I understand that a lot of you don't want to have your money tied up very long. I'm in the same boat, guys. But I do want to let you know that this is the best time to take advantage of the numbers. We are getting in early before the syndicates move the line, uh, before individuals move the line, before the general public starts paying attention to football and football betting in particular again and just jacks up these lines all over the place. So when they do move, uh, it's going to give us a few different things, or a few different options, I should say. So if you get in now or within the next week or two, you'll get the line that's out now. And then once the general public comes in, they'll move that line and you can either play the middle if you want to hedge your bets and kind of, you know, minimize your winnings, but also minimize your losing. Or you can take advantage of those numbers that have moved and then create some variance and some, you know, maybe some holes in those lines due to the money that's coming in, especially if you've been doing your homework, if you're anything like me, and I'm assuming most of you are, especially if you're watching this video in the middle of July, you're probably reading up on, um, you know, at least fantasy, if nothing else, looking at teams, different moves, different uh, coaching moves, all sorts of different information that's coming into the NFL that most people aren't even going to realize it's going to go completely under their radar and they won't really realize this information until like halfway through the season uh, and that's when again the markets will become sharp because everybody will know the information that we have had all summer long or at least you know are getting in the summertime that being said let's take a look at what i'm trying to do here uh, so i already have a few picks out for week one uh, my favorite pick of those is the seahawks plus three uh, and actually, if you got the line early enough, it was Seahawks plus three and a half versus the Colts at the Colts week one. Uh, I also love the Jaguars at Texans under 45 and a half for week one. Um, some stats on those. If you don't already know, Colts have lost both their game, uh, all, their, all their game, all their season openers, sorry, with Frank Wright. Uh, and the one that they, that they were competitive in or the ones that they are competitive in and even in game two, of most of these seasons, they only win by like two to three points. So getting the plus three, plus three and a half, or even a plus two and a half really is going to be pretty uh, solid. As far as the Texans are concerned, uh, they fall into the category of being a home dog for week one. Home dogs over the last three years, or I'm sorry, longer than I believe it was the last 10 years, are eight, 30, and three to the under. So there's eight overs, 30 unders, and three pushes. Now, those are huge numbers. But aside from just going strictly off the numbers, I love that the Texans are not going to have much of an offense. And uh, really, the Jaguars are also not going to have much of an offense. Also going with that, Urban Meyer is a first-time head coach with, of course, Trevor Lawrence, rookie quarterback. And anytime you pair up a rookie quarterback with a first-time head coach, teams on average total about 19.5 points per game. And they are expected to win. So if we assume that they score 21 points, Texans score 10, let's say, um, or let's hell, let's even say that they you know score 20 and they lose 21 to 20, you're still only at 41. So you have a, at least a field goal worth of kind of cushion there. Um, but aside from that, those are the two that I've really given out and the two that I've been uh, most confident on. But the other two plays that have come up recently, uh, so another one that fits at home dog stat is going to be Washington. So Washington is playing at home week one against the Chargers. Now, the total in that line is 44 and a half. And while Washington is uh, or was very, very good on defense last year, I think they're going to retain a high level of defense. Their offense was not really good last year. Uh, they went through a total of four different quarterbacks with a, the, an offensive coordinator that was in his first year with the team. And I got to say, that's just not a good mix. And so obviously they did not have the success they wanted to on offense and their defense really kept them in games for the most part. And it also, you know, got them to the playoffs. So I can only imagine this is going to be a defense first team with kind of an emphasis on maybe running the ball. Uh, yes, they did get Ryan Fitzpatrick. And yes, I think their offense will be a little bit better because of that. They also got some offensive linemen in there. Uh, through the draft, and that's going to also help. That all being said, though, I still don't see this as being a high-octane offense. On the other end of the ball, we have the Chargers. 
the Chargers uh, have the ability to be in a high offense, a high octane offense with guys like Keenan Allen, Justin Herbert, uh, even like a Mike Williams, who's a pretty you know pretty good red zone threat and a deep downfield threat. Uh, then you also have you know, Austin Eckler, who's always a threat. But the way that the team has played in the past um, was very slow. It was very you know monotonous. Let's ground and pound the ball. Let's just go really slow and try and kind of waste the clock. Um, that I'm saying all this because they fired Anthony Lynn because of that issue, and they brought in Staley, Joe Staley, <clears throat> excuse me, and while Staley is hopefully an improvement over Anthony Lynn, he is a defensive-minded coach, which leads me to believe that the GM for the Chargers is still trying to play this defensive-minded game. They still have an amazing defense with great pieces all over that field from their secondary to their front seven with Bosa. They just have a defense that is amazing, just like the, the uh, Washington team. And so I think their offense, well, again, while it could be this high scoring, oct high octane offense, I think they're going to be slow by design. Um, and I still think that they're going to try and get Austin Eckler really involved with a lot of early runs. Uh, and dump offs and things like that, and they're going to try and kind of keep everything close to the vest while they shouldn't, and Justin Herbert could totally let this thing rip. I don't think they're going to pass um, as much as they should or as deep as they should. Aside from that, Justin Herbert can and probably is in store for some regression. Um, he was an amazing first-year talent, and I, by all means, I am not knocking him. I love that guy. I actually... Uh, wanted to have him on my quote-unquote team, which was the Cowboys. Uh, obviously, they didn't draft him, but I love the guy's talent, and he's just an amazing player. That all being said, though, if players aren't used right, they're just not used right, and there's not a lot we can do about that. So I don't think they are going to score a lot either. Um, with a combination of two really good defenses and two offenses that are going to be kind of uh, neutralized by their own coaching staffs, I think that this game is going to be a lower scoring game. And if we take a look at the total right now, we have the Chargers in Washington for a total of 44 and a half. So 44 and a half, if we take that under, that's fine. I think the 44 and a half is probably going to be decent. Uh, in case you didn't already know this, the key numbers for totals are 44, 47, and 51. So those three numbers in uh, most games end up with those numbers. And I apologize I'm phrasing that wrong. But if you look at the total score of games just throughout history, those are the three most common total scores, 44, 47, 51. So with this one, you're getting the 44, which is great. Uh, but honestly, I don't think you're going to um, – I don't think that leaves a lot of room for cushion, especially because we're not really sure – what the offenses are going to do, we're thinking and assuming that they're going to be kind of slower paced. Um, but like I said, with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Herbert, they really have the potential to go off at any time to, you know, make this leap and to, even if it's not by design, just they have the an ability to, stole, to score on like third and long or, you know, uh, second and long where they're going to be forced to pass and just break something wide open especially with pieces like Terry McLaurin and Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and, uh, you know, just lots of pieces all over the field, Antonio Gibson, Austin Eckler. These guys can just break runs off at any time. So we want to have a little bit more cushion there. While you could take it straight up, I personally like to mix this in with the Tampa Bay and Cowboys game, and it would be Tampa Bay minus the 6.5. So we're going to tease these two. Uh, the Cowboys Tampa Bay game. So a few things and if you watch my other videos as far as scheduling advantages are concerned You know that the Thursday night football teams home teams If they are over 500 or expected to end the season over 500 Only lose 13% of the time uh, That's you know, let's just round it down and say that's one in ten. So you're you're gonna have one, possibly two Thursday night home losers, uh, assuming that all these Thursday night teams are, you know, above 500, which I don't think that's true either. But 
That being said, that stat just leads me to say that Tampa Bay, I expect them to be over 500 at the end of the year. I really don't know what to expect with Dallas, but I don't, do not expect them to come in and beat Tampa Bay at home Thursday night. Uh, Mike McCarthy is just not a good coach, unfortunately. He is below average. Uh, that's just that's not just me. That's Warren Sharp, and that's literally any other uh, you know professional analyst that's looking at coaches. Nobody has Mike McCarthy ranked in the top 10, and I don't even have him ranked in the top 16. So he is below average as far as coaching is concerned. And the reason I bring up coaches, while I always bring up coaches, is especially important week one because it is going to showcase how well your preparation was in leading up to game one. A lot of coaches like Frank Reich or like Sean Payton are amazing coaches, but they have a hard time getting ready for week one because they rely on analytics and data and stats, and there's not really much to go off of in week one. Um Guys like Arians, like a Bill Belichick, like a John Harbaugh, those guys are preparing all the time. They are going to run their plan, and they will adjust at, as necessary if needed. They don't need to have all the data in uh, by week one. They just want to run their game, and they're going to emphasize what their team does well, and they're going to try to do anything necessary to get the win. And for the most part, especially with the whole offseason, they're able to dial up some plays that they know are going to be good looks, put them in good scoring opportunities, and essentially get them out to an early lead. And once they have that early lead, then it's just a matter of kind of holding that lead and not making mistakes. And guys like Bruce Arians can do that, just like Andy Reid, just, uh, you know, same thing as Bill Belichick, right? So all of these guys are amazing at it. I don't see Dallas beating this team. Uh, Dallas... If again, if you've heard my other videos, I think they will win a lot of games based strictly on talent. Other teams that just do not have the firepower to hold up with them, those are the teams that Dallas will beat. Tampa Bay is not in that category. They have firepower. I don't want to say it's necessarily on paper as good as Dallas, uh, but the firepower combined with just the overwhelming coaching advantage leads me to say Tampa Bay is going to win. And this is another one where I really think you, you could probably play it just straight up. Um, traditionally, the Super Bowl winning team does cover the spread uh, about 70% of the time in game one. So I think you have a good shot if you want to just play this straight out. The only reason I really want to throw this in the teaser, well, two reasons. One, I am getting a key number, so you're getting the key number of three, and you're getting the lesser key number of six. Six is the, the fourth key number. Uh, so if you're not aware, as far as spreads are concerned, key numbers are three, seven, ten, and six, with six being the one that's kind of the lesser of those. Uh, but you are getting six for what it's worth, and you're also getting the three. And the reason that I'm, I want to get those key numbers is because Dallas um, is just in that really unique spot of having immense talent and terrible coaching. So they are liable to really go off on offense at any given time, have um, players just make plays for them and do crazy things to get to win or to have these higher scoring games um, kind of in spite of their coach. And there is a definite chance that Dallas covers this spread. You know, that 30% is nothing to sneeze at as far as the away team with, you know, with these uh, game ones against Super Bowl winners. It's possible, and I could see Dak and Zeke and, uh, you know, C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper putting together a great offensive performance and keeping this game close, and Tampa Bay pulling it out by, like, a field goal with some, you know, defensive plays. Um, that all being said, though, if we tease these two together, we make them both six-point teases, you're looking at minus 110, so the regular, you know, minus 110 that you play uh, for most games, but you're going to get... Washington at the Chargers under 50 and a half, uh, which you do get the additional key number 47. If you can, and I'm going to be watching this myself, see what this number does. If it gets to 45, I'd like it even more because then you get the last key number of 51 with this tease. And that's really where I want to be. That's why I'm not placing this bet just yet. That's why I don't even really have cash in this account yet. Um, all of my bets so far have gone through Vegas themselves. That being said, though, um, if you wait for this extra half a point here, we can get to 51 and get that last key number. With Tampa, um, it's going to 
you know, essentially, even if it goes to seven, which it could, a lot of people are going to be you know, coming in, betting the Buccaneers off that Super Bowl win. I could get it. I could see it going to minus seven. That being said, a tease of getting it down to one is really just as valuable uh, as a minus a half. It's not, um, obviously, the minus a half is just a little bit better. But that being said, you would still be getting, obviously, the key number of seven, six, and three. So either way, you know, you, you're okay waiting on this one for a little bit longer. But the Chargers and Washington game, if it does go down to 44, which is possible with a lot of people thinking that both of these defenses are going to be amazing, um, you're really not losing anything because 50 is not a key number. So to go from 50 and a half to 50 is not a huge disadvantage. Um, so if you want to wait and see where this number goes and maybe it goes up a little bit uh, off the stance that people think Herbert's going to come in and put up a bunch of points or that uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to come in and be able to move this Washington offense, you might get that last key number. So that's where we're at with this uh, tease for week one. If you wanted to throw something else in there, uh, because I know a lot of people do want to you know, kind of get a bigger tease or a bigger parlay, a few games I like, or I should say really one game that I like, um, is this Rams at Chicago game. I'm sorry, Chicago at the Rams. You could tease that one down to one as well. Uh, and I think that'd be pretty, you know, it's pretty safe. I don't think that the Rams are going to really have any issues with Chicago. Uh, but same thing here. I know uh, Sean McVay is going to be kind of unrolling his new offense with Matt Stafford. And I don't know how much he really wants to show is my issue with this one. I think that the Rams, if they were to really let loose, he could, you know, they could go off and just smear them all over the field, uh, you know, and put up a win by like 21 plus points. That being said, though, in week one, I don't know how much Sean McVay wants to uh, kind of put out on tape, and I don't know how much he wants to, to use all of his players. If there is a uh, an advantage, if he's already up by like 14 or 10 or 17 and it's the fourth quarter, you know, he may not be rolling out cam makers as much. He might not be um, so ready to let Stafford kind of get out of the pocket. You know, he might even... Uh, take, you know, guys like Aaron Donald maybe off the field or kind of giving them a little bit of a breather. And those things don't sound like much, but if he's okay with securing the win, let's say there's like six minutes left and they're up by 10, um, I could see him kind of letting off the pedal only because we have an extra game this year. The Rams, Sean McVay, they're all aware that they're trying to make a playoff run this year. They have the pieces to do it, the coach to do it. So I could see them emphasizing health more so than just adding on the scoreboard. So that's why I would tease them down to the minus one and throw this in there if you wanted to. If you absolutely wanted to, like I said, if you wanted to just have a bigger payday, you could. That gets you up to plus 180 on a three-team tease. I don't advise this um, only because I'm not really in the market for doing huge teases. I don't really do a lot of parlays. I will do some here and there, but it's not a huge emphasis for me. Um, that all being said, guys, Hopefully, you like at least two of these plays. Uh, I personally am going to be going with Washington, Tampa Bay. The Rams, I may look to just play either straight up uh, or take pieces of that game, like the Rams first quarter, um, things like that. So there are some other plays I like here, guys. I like the Baltimore uh, angle. So Baltimore minus four at the Raiders. And to me, that's just, uh, that's just, it's a, <laughs> it's very hard for me to fathom uh, the Raiders beating Harbaugh in a season opener. Um, while these are both going to be running teams, I just I don't think Rudin has it in him to beat Harbaugh, at least not in game one. Um, Harbaugh is traditionally going all out in preseason. He's trying to win. He's getting that team set up with a great attitude to go out there and win at all costs. He got another lineman. He actually got about half his linemen uh, either – Brand new uh, via the draft or free agency, or he's getting them back from uh, injuries. Lamar Jackson is going to be better used this year. He has a better line to give him a little bit more time with the passing, um, and it's also going to affect their run game. Guys like J.K. Dobbins and even Gus Edwards should be more effective with the better line. I really just see Baltimore going out and crushing the Raiders, and that's going to be a straight up play for me. So if you want to add that into the lineup too, uh, Baltimore minus four in week one at the Raiders. 
go ahead and do that. And again, that's a straight play. Do not tease that. There is no reason to tease that. You do not tease through zero. If you haven't heard this elsewhere, don't tease through zero. It's a terrible idea. Uh, if you wanted to absolutely tease this game, I would tease the total so that you get the key number 51, the, the full number. You're not going to push on 51. You would win if you take the under 51. And again, you would take the under there because it is a home dog situation. Uh, but even that, that's up to you if you want to touch that or not. I'm just going to do Baltimore minus four for the full game. Thank you again, guys. Hopefully you found something here that you want to uh, play some money on or at least something that is going to be on your radar to watch the lines moving forward. Again, I would not be putting a whole bunch of money into accounts right now uh, unless you're going to be in the Vegas area and you absolutely, and, you know, like myself, it's one, you don't live there, you're traveling there, then you can put some money down on it now. Uh, if you're doing online gambling, if you're looking at different sites, um, I would try to hold off as much as possible. Just be aware of these lines. Don't have any cash in it now. Wait until the lines move a little bit in our favor and then make your wagers. Uh, that way you're getting the best line. Your money's not tied up. Because even if you're not betting right now and you're just depositing money into the account, your money is tied up. You, know, you can't, a lot of these uh, online websites don't let you just take the money right out. And even if you do have to take the money right out, there is a fee. Uh, there's going to be a processing fee. Then there's going to be some sort of weight with, you know, whether it's mailing or even if it's like um, like Bitcoin, you got to go try and get the cash out or move the cash around. And it's just a big nightmare. So wait as long as you can before you put cash in this thing uh, and then grab these numbers while they're hot. So thanks again. Thank you for any support. Please like, comment, subscribe below. Give us any plays you have for week one. Uh, can I emphasize this enough, guys, that earlier in the season is our best time to act, and we want to get as many plays out there. So if you have something that you want to share with the class here, something that you think with a good take as to why you're betting this, put it in the comments below. Uh, I'd like to see it, and I'm sure other people out there want to see it. So thanks again. Have a great day. Good luck.